this is not a slight on anyone okay but this is the reality you know i'm going to talk about approaches or screws that you should look out for when you have low gpa or high gpa and it's not an attempt to slight any schools but there are levels to schools in the u.s if you don't know that now um i'm not just talking about ranking or by u.s news or something but there are schools that are categorized as r1 universities and r2 universities okay so r1 universities are universities that of course all these ivy league schools are r1 but there are a lot of other schools that you've probably not not heard of that are r1 universities as well and what that means is they have a high level of research activity and they produce a lot of doctoral students so they have a good number of doctoral programs and if you have a good number of doctoral programs you are doing some quality research now there are out r2 universities as well they don't have a research activity that is as intense as r1 universities but they, they still have some research programs as as well so some of some of these schools have more of master's programs okay they have more master's programs than phds a couple of their programs might have phd programs but most of the time they have master's programs so if you have a low gpa like your gpa is really low and you you know some people don't want to do exams i always say that you can you can help your gpa if you take the gre or and the toefl you can you can use that as evidence of how well you are prepared or how sound you are maybe your gpa is not a true reflection of your ability but if you are trying to run away from exams or something then you might want to target you know those r2 universities and do a master's first okay do a master's first apply for a master's in r2 universities but I must warn you that R2 universities don't have as much funding as R1 universities. So you might even not get funded or sometimes they will give you some partial assistantship. So you would, something you something will have to give, okay? Um, a lot of R2 universities don't have as much funding as R1 universities. So a strategy is to start from R2 universities, do a master's, then move up if you want to do a PhD to r1 universities but the the trade-off is you you might you might not have enough funding if you, that's even if you, they give you funding at all because most of this funding come what where we get all this research assistantship or teaching assistantship most of them come from research grants that professors write and most of these r1 universities get most of the grants so they they are able to provide better funding offers for students than r2 universities so that that's always my advice but if you are willing to put everything you have in the exams and you maybe you have a low gp and you you, you got three trains in your gre i don't see why an r university might not they will they will probably take a chance on you okay but most of the time people that, that have low gps are even the ones that are trying to run away from exams as well so in that case, you would, you would have to, you know, go for, I want to say less ranked universities, but let's just say R2 universities that might not give you enough quality funding, you know. They might not give you quality funding as R1 universities would do. So that's R1, R2 universities and how you can manipulate your way into admission or funding in the U.S. Mm -hmm.